The idea of this drawing is to get the feeling of something in an unnatural place. This plane here is flying so low, and that was the reports of what people said about um, the attacks on Darwin. That um, the planes were so low you could see the pilots through the cockpits, you could see their bases. It must have been a horrific thought. So what I'm trying to recreate is the brightness, the brightness of the tropical lagoon, Darwin Harbour here. And the chaos of the without because um, even though there was many many of them they were thought to be American bombers and they weren't because they thought that to be ten American bombers and the same thing happened at Pearl Harbor so Darwin was um, open to attack big time even though they a priest had reported the um, the planes, the incoming planes. Okay. It was just a short break, uh, but in, in with confidence and a pitch for the game. Kieran, thank you very much. Well done. Thank you, my pleasure. Bye bye. Kieran Drinker is the general manager of marketing and media of the Sydney Cricket Ground. He's just finished 21 to 2 on 7 to 74 ABC Melbourne. And uh, Kieran, my voice doing a podcast during the week at the moment. Over. We'll do the other tail plane. I've just got to find my piece of balsa wood.
thinning out the edges. Getting the correct um, curve. Cut away from your fingers if you can. Now this is being photographed from the top, so I don't need to have this very tall look. It's not a very tall fin at all. Probably should be four times that amount. But it's just going to go on there. I'm hoping it'll give us enough. I'll have to put a base on it. Now as you can see, I'm missing the plug there. I'll have to put something on the tail. I reshaped the cow. Look at this. It's got body filler on that. See, I've put body filler on the cowling to fill it up. See how coarse the wood is? See the scoring? Okay. Just sand that back a bit now. Just about ready. All I need to do is put a new tail plane on it. A new rear plug here. I need to fill this area out here. I'll get a new bit put on it. So I just need to find a balsa wood scrap. Keep all the scraps in a box, just like this. It's that sort of recycling thing. Don't throw things out if you don't need to. Maybe just store them. There's a limit. I've just got to be careful I don't get back into being an aeroplane nerd. Which means you will sacrifice your life as you know it. To make great aeroplanes. No, I think um, we need to have a life as well as things that fly around in the air. So if you find you can't move in the studio because you've kept all those wonderful things, you're really not getting yourself anywhere. So I'm going to have a wonderful time. I can't wait to paint this one. I'm not sure whether I'll do it grey or olive green. Naval fighters, I'm thinking it might be grey. Good thing about super glue is when I stick this on, see that spat go on? When I stick that on, it will glue in about 
two minutes flat, which means I'll be able to carve it straight away. And that's important because I've really got to get this done. I want to get the wings glued on. That's why I've gone to super glue. It's probably not the best glue for balsa wood, but I can um, it's solid enough to allow it to be used straight away. That's what I was looking for. Super glue and hot wax, which is bulbous and hard to use, but it dries instantly and has a strong bond. That's all you need. Change to a curve, change to a D blade. Might be able to get some of that curve in there. I'm not using correct carving tools. I think um, most people would use chisels, little files. I find this um, these scalpels are just fantastic. They've been tremendous. See that? It just came off. Um, I'll just stick that back on. We're just going to keep going because basically I want to get this painted. I'm looking to have it painted. It's my major concern now. I want to have it painted. Hard thing's going to be making a canopy. And canopies are a bit of an adventure every time because I never know how they're going to end up.
So now what we've got is we've got the wings on. Let's have a look. I stuck them on like that. It's got a panel to hold them. It's got the um, tail plane on. There's the extension that I stuck on. And now you can also see wings and cowl, cowling, and it'll be filmed from the top so we get a good shadow on it. Actually, this light's excellent for it. Light's excellent. So there's the tail plane on, main wings, cowling's been filled, ready to go. So what I'll do now is I'll measure out a canopy and um, in wood and I'll carve and um, shape that and then I'll get ready to mould it. But it's no good from the side of course, if we have a look at it from the side. Not quite right is it, but it's going to be from the top, so that's what we're looking at. It's time to get that look of um, the real plane. Okay, once I've sanded it, what I do is I get some undercoat. I've sanded it and filled up various holes and pieces. And now what I'll do is um, just paint it white with undercoat so I can see where the mistakes are. And then I'll fill those gaps and I'll sand away the things. I can see already that I'm going to have to add some to the cow. The cow's much too short according to the plan. So I'll add some to that angle on one of the tail wings is a bit strange too. So um, I'll cut the cowling off, add some to that, add some body filler around the place and this wing fillet's also a bit too large, I'll cut this out, might do that now. Okay, see the canopy, it's quite rough so what I've done is I've just added a great deal of filler to it and what I'll do is I'll carve and shape from the filler so I'll go and dry that with a hairdryer and then I'll carve and shape it with the um, with sandpaper and a knife. But that gives me the bulk I need, okay? Okay, here we go. What we've got now is we've got the canopy carved, much too tall from the side view, but fine from the top. Might just sand it down a little bit. And um, what we've done is we've remodeled the cowling. I've added a plug in. If you have a look from the bottom, you can see the bit I've added in. Cut it in and added some more. It's all been sanded down really well. You can still see how coarse some bits are. But I might just give that another light. Sounds quite coarse, isn't it? It's too coarse to paint. I think you can see that texture. Hairy wing tips. We'll take care of that in a minute. It's, it has trouble without backgrounds. 
Okay. But here's the canopy. Look, the good thing about the canopy is you can actually see where it's been remodeled. See the chunks out of it? A bit I've added in. It's a bit high, really, but um, we'll see what we do about that. I think what I'll do here is I'll just reduce the height of it a bit from the top, but it looks fine. The top view is going to be something like this. That's what I'm aiming to shoot, so about from there. I don't know, probably take a bit off the height. It's a bit high all over, so. A bit of brisk sanding, I think. Okay, what I was going to show you is how to make this canopy because um, what I've done is I've got my plug which fits, you know, that's the bit that comes off the top of the plane. That's the shape of the um, cockpit. So what I do now is I create a support. On the end of here what I've done is I've traced out the general form of the cockpit for a support. And I'll show you the next phases as we go on. So what I'm going to do is carve that away. So what happens now is the canopy goes on here. See how it's got a clear support? So that when I'm moulding it, I'll carve it down so that I can push the uh, mould over the top. But I'll set it up so you can see it. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'll trace out the canopy like this. Twice. Once. Over here twice, the canopy shape, and then I'll cut them out. So with the scalpel, I'll be following these lines. to do with this is really hard cardboard to cut I hate cutting this cardboard it's just horrible but you have to be careful and don't hurry because the knife's so sharp you make a mistake and you cut deep into your finger I'll try some different knives see which one works best got a block of wood underneath What I need to do is I need two of those that the canopy can pass through easily. Ooh. See? And what will happen is, well, we'll see. You'll see it all. Let's cut the other one out. Okay. Just check the fit. Look. Now, the process is this. Okay, so I've stuck my canopy onto the onto the wood underneath, and what I'll do now is I'll shape it so that um, the mould will get out, so I can pass the um, the things over the top, pass the uh, moulds over the top. 
I've noticed it helps if I support the whole canopy shape. I get a much better result from the, um, oh dear. So just test out to see if this goes over the top. You probably know, realize what's going to happen in a second. There we go. It's going to be a bit of noise in the minute when I heat up the um, stuff. Or maybe we'll just use a candle this time. Okay. Now what I need is I need my little piece of um, need a piece of acetate. Grow a canopy like this. Gosh, it's huge, isn't it? Okay, we'll just cut the acetate out. That's what we need. I'm using this off an old phone cord. This is packaging from a phone cord. Hardly a heroic piece of plastic, but there we go. Okay, here we go. Now, the mould, look. The plastic acetate goes between the two layers, like that. Make sure it's properly lined up. You can see that's not correct yet. Okay. Let's line it up properly so I can get it through in one shot. This is so important. Now if I overheat it, what happens is it'll it'll go black. Now it's not a big one to make. I might be able to get it through in one. Done. Okay, not terrific, but not too bad. Look at that. Not too bad. It'll help if I can get close to that candle flame. I wonder if I'll just try them again. I'll just try and push it through a bit more. Why not? We'll see. I'm going to try this again. I've never tried this before. I'm going to try and push it through again. Just heat it up again and push it through twice. See what happens. No. Okay. It's not getting warm enough around the edges. Try that. Oh. Gosh, great on the front, bad on the back. Oh, you probably saw what happened there. Bad one. Let's try again. Got a new piece of acetate cut, see that? It's, I've used it for one of the um, other canopies for the P51, but we're going to try it again. Okay. Acetate goes in between the two layers, like that. Close together as we can get it. Just tighten this up again because um, that didn't grip very well. Heat it up over the candle flame, pass the thing over the candle flame about five, ten times. Nice and squishy. There we go. Right down there. That's the smell. Correct smell. Right, here we go. Oh, I've burnt it. I think we're going to go with it. Perfect one. They barely go that well. Okay, now I have to leave it there for a moment. If I pull it off, what will happen is it will shrink as it cools. It will pull as it cools. So I'll just leave it there. Okay, take the top part of the mould off. See that? That's gone down over the thing. Pull it off. Zero canopy. 
Now what I do is to cut it, I'll take that pit off. This goes onto there, and I actually cut it off on the old mould. So I'll put it back on there, draw a pencil line around where it has to be cut out. So what I'll be doing is, when it's cooled a bit more, I'll be making the cut along this panel line here. But I won't cut it here because the wood's too soft. So there you go, that's how you make the canopy. Oh, it's very sticky. Okay, take it off the back first. Zero canopy. Don't you just lo I love that stuff. There you go. So I'll just draw the line of the canopy out. Oops. That's fine. That was a good one. I'm trying to leave this bit. I'm leaving this bit on because it makes it strong. It's got an angle join here. It makes it nice and strong. The whole canopy will be completely soft. It'll go completely floppy once I cut this away. If I can get it in one cut, it's not such a bad thing. You yeah, see, I can't get the scissors in there. Nerve-wracking, I hate it. Oh, much easier to do than the Mustang one. That was fantastic to do. Very exciting. There's nothing at risk, really, but it's just... It's very exciting because you go through it and you think, will it happen, will it work, will it work? It's a wonderful feeling, and it's also really sort of scary at the same time. There's not much at, there's not much at stake. It's just that feeling of tension which is wonderful in a way because if it works it's such a joy whoops you can't see me can you I'm cutting around the back now I never get it perfect but it doesn't matter because what I do is I found a new way to attach them which is just terrific using the body filler that's it okay now let's try out our canopy and see how it goes I might just trim it down a bit more, but it's pretty good. Now, that's not correct, okay? No, no canopy would be like that. But that doesn't really matter, because we're going to be looking at it from the top. Like that. Upload time. What we've got now is um, our little zero overhead view. A few little bits and pieces have been added since we spoke last. The canopy's now moulded, but it's the wrong shape. Look at that, it's much too high for a normal canopy. Good from the top view though. Let's see if we can get the light onto it. Um, things that we've added. I've cut down the tail fins, they were too big. When I compared them with the plan, I've cut down these. 
I've added the seat headrest, it's characteristic for the Zero. And I've added a curved section over the back of the canopy. See that? You can probably see how rough things are. I've carved out inside the cockpit with a knife and added a spinner on the front. See how rough that is too. Um, added the roundels. See the compass marks so that they're both the same, the same on both wings. But look at the ones on the side, they've been distorted, they're sort of flat ovals. Tailplane's much too low. It's looking good. There's too much curve here. I might have to taper this down a bit more still. Got my diagram up here. What I want to be doing now, here's the uh, things that I didn't use, one wing that didn't work out. I really wanted to tell you that um, if something doesn't work out, you're not to get discouraged because basically when you're making mistakes, it means you're trying something new that needs some attention. Here's a tail fin that didn't work out. Can't get it in the centre. Anyway. So what I'll do now is I'll just put a thin coat of filler on things. Thin coat of filler. That's the one. It's looking pretty rough in places. I like some of the roughness, but not too much of it. This filler is fine, it's so fine grained. What it allows it to do is it makes it look almost like plastic when I've finished with it. If I've done a good job sanding it down, I get a plastic like appearance. You must imagine that in this small scale, this aircraft's tiny, isn't it? something as big as the groove that you can see behind the cockpit there you'd be able to fit your hand into almost all your fingers so we've got to get rid of that stuff if it was life size i mean Right, let's paint the plane. Start with the grey. It's a yellowy grey for the naval zeros. White. Touch of ochre. Black. A bit of brown. It's green. No, I don't want the hookers green. Black. Touch of brown. Try to touch of brown. Look. Black's not coming out. There we go. Touch of black. Touch of dark brown. There we go. Give it a good shake. Otherwise the paint separates and you get a sort of a fluid. Now I just need a drop really, drop up where the other brown is, there we go. Okay, so palette, clean water, start with white. Touch of yellow, black. It's a navel grey. I don't know if you can see how little I'm using. Very little, very little colours for that. A bit darker. Don't want it too dark. It's looking better. So I've mixed up our palette, mixed up my grey the navel grey for the zero and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the plane now nice big broad strokes let's get it as grey as possible got the marks for the uh, Hironu the roundels let's 
going to put some base coats down there and I'll probably sand in between coats because it's pretty thick but I need to cover some of the grain so planes that attacked Darwin were from a naval task force some were from Kupang and others were from a carrier group So I'll do the grey naval version, not the green army version. I might get some water on that. It's just a bit thick, so I'll go on. Okay, so paint the plane over. We'll, we'll do things like I'll scribe in the um, tail surfaces later. I'll just get a coat of paint on it. I can't believe how these planes change when you paint them. Yeah. So I kind of get the idea, here we go, just get those gun ports out. the sea that I've set up for the background to Darwin. The ocean, the reflections. 
Now if I come off to the side here, you can see how I've masked it off. So there you go. That's probably the shot you'll see. No, just a bit closer. There you go, ships in the foreground and smoke will have to be put onto the sky. Okay, lots happened with the zero. Do you remember the zero? Here we go. It's um I've had to reshape the wings because they were incorrect. And I'll show you how that went. It's a lovely little thing. Now if we come down into it, you'll see how incorrect all the proportions are again. There we go, look at that. Flat. 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 And there it goes, zooming past. A lot has happened to it. What I've had to do is, just flip it over carefully. It's my hand. It's hard to know how big these things are until you actually see a hand next to it. Now look at this. Underneath, let's do a bit wide here. You might see that what I've done is I've had to put Perspex panels there. I put those on the plans. And that was the new wing shape. And this white edge you can see here, that's all body filler. So I've created the right shape. Filled it out with body filler and then rounded the wing profiles off. I've got tape here that's holding it, so I'll just grab that. So I've reshaped the whole wings actually. You can see the filler cracking if you look up on the edges. Oh. You can see the filler starting to crack up. Lots of sanding, compass holes for the roundels. But this view is fantastic of the pilot. I love this. It's, um, it's what makes these things real. It's that pilot, the person in there. These stories are about people after all. See that tiny little rudder? Looks ridiculous. But this is a lovely view. Look at that. That cockpit shot is just terrific. Very happy with that. Yep, there's the rough. And it shows... Good detail. Some crash sheds. The zero coming in low by the ground. The harbour in the background. People running around terrified as you would be when there were sort of 180 plus planes zooming around bombing this very small. What in effect was a country town.